In multicellular organisms, cells must divide to allow growth, development, repair, and replacement. Normal cell division occurs by a process called mitosis. Mitosis is used in the growth and development of plants and animals starting after fertilization. It's also used to repair damaged or broken tissues. And mitosis is also used for the replacement of old cells. For example, skin cells are constantly shed and replaced. For the exam, you should be able to give examples like these for why mitosis is important. So how do animal and plant cells divide? Cells divide in a series of stages called the cell cycle. There are three stages which we call a cycle as it goes around. So this stage here, represented by I, is interphase. This is where the cell prepares for division and is where the cell spends most of its life. The M here represents mitosis. This is the beginning of cell division. It's where the cell divides its contents ready for splitting into two. And finally, this C represents cytokinesis. This is the end of cell division and the final part of the cell cycle in which the cell splits in two. It's named cytokinesis because it involves division of the cytoplasm. After cytokinesis, the cell cycle begins again in the new cells. For the exam, you should be able to describe the three overall stages of the cell cycle, including mitosis. Interphase prepares the cell for division. Interphase ensures that each new cell is identical by duplicating the contents of the cell before the cell divides. Remember that there are three stages in the cell cycle, interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. Interphase takes up the majority of the cell cycle. It's the stage that the cell spends most of its time in. You are expected to be able to describe what happens to prepare a cell for division during interphase. So let's have a look at this stage of the cell cycle in a bit more detail. The cell duplicates the chromosomes before division so that each daughter cell is genetically identical. This diagram shows a nucleus. Inside the nucleus, we have paired chromosomes, and this is one chromosome pair. Remember that in the human body, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, but that would be too confusing to show on this diagram. So when the chromosomes are duplicated before division, the nucleus will look something like this. This part indicates the original chromosome that came from this cell. And opposite it is the copied chromosome. These two chromosomes are joined together by the centromere. Because each individual chromosome within the chromosome pair has been duplicated, this means that when the cell divides, the daughter cells will be diploid, like the parent cell. So what other preparations are needed before the cell can divide? The cell must also grow and increase the number of subcellular structures before division. When this happens, the animal cell will start off looking something like this and end up looking like this. So you can see that it's got larger overall and there are more subcellular structures such as the mitochondria and the ribosomes as well. This increase in subcellular structures and in the size of the overall cell means that when it divides, there will be enough for two individual cells. After interphase, cells divide into two by mitosis and cytokinesis. Mitosis produces two genetically identical copies of a diploid cell. So in mitosis, we have one diploid cell, and we can refer to this as the parent cell, which divides into two, producing two diploid cells. And we can refer to these as daughter cells. Both of these cells are identical and diploid as they contain the same DNA that was duplicated during interphase. So how does mitosis occur to produce two diploid cells from one diploid cell? After the chromosomes are duplicated, the nucleus breaks down. So this simple diagram shows the cell after the chromosomes have duplicated. The circle surrounding them is the nucleus. And because the chromosomes have duplicated, the nucleus is going to break down. Next, the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. So at the moment, you can see that the chromosomes are just arranged randomly within the cell. This blue dotted line shows the middle of the cell or the cell equator. 
In real life, this line is invisible, but it shows where those chromosomes are going to end up. Next, the chromosomes are pulled to each end of the cell. So once they are nicely lined up along the center of the cell, the chromosomes get pulled apart. Once this happens, we now refer to them as chromatids because they're no longer joined at the centromere. In this division, the chromatids are pulled to opposite ends of the cell, which will look something like this. Now, the cell membrane and the cytoplasm divide. At this stage, the cell looks a little bit larger as it prepares to split into two. The cell wall starts to round out and split itself so that eventually we end up with two distinct cells. The physical process of cell division is called cytokinesis. It's helpful to remember that this involves the cytoplasm, with the cyto in both words meaning cell. So cytokinesis means the cell moving apart. So you can see that we're very close to having two new cells. So what's the final stage in mitosis? New nuclei form in each of the two new cells. So the new cells have their cell wall and the nuclei start to form around the chromatids in the middle. Now we have two new diploid cells. You don't need to know the names of the different phases of the mitosis stage but you should be able to describe the general mechanism that takes one parent cell to two daughter cells. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos, and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE Biology course. See you there.